Amen. Indeed, we had a wonderful transition from our Sunday school lesson to this praise and worship. If you want God to do something for you or in your life, give Him praise. You had a rough week, give God praise. You had a great week, give God praise. He's worthy, church. He's worthy of our praise. From the rising of the sun till the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. From the rising of the sun.
answers only you provide because you know just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who you are. We are so loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's your perfect. You're perfect. You're perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. Your peace so unexplainable I can hardly think as you call me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still into love, love fallen. It doesn't how, matter how many times we failed. He's a father of love. With a raise in your hand, you're saying, brother, this morning I have a need. I need my father to take care of. You see, he's a father that hears everything. For all we got to do is just cry out to him, he says, and I'll be there. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, God, and we thank you for who you are. We thank you for bringing us through time and time again, though we don't deserve it. How many times have we failed you, God? How many times have we have done things that we have should not have done? But you don't shun us away. You don't reject us. Instead, you reach out your hand and you say, come here and I will love on you. God, we just ask that you touch each and every one of these needs. That God, that you reach out. Those that are not here, that God, that you'll just reach to them. Those that are sick and cannot make it, God, that you will reach to them and give them strength and just move upon them. And we give you glory and we give you honor and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
Church, have you have you sometimes just looked back in your life and through the ups and downs and the struggles? And you wonder how you made it this far? It's, it's but God. Through everything that you've been through, doesn't matter how bad a sinner you were compared to somebody else, we were all sinners, and we've all been through stuff. But I am so thankful that through it all, I had to learn to depend on Him. Church, we've got to learn to depend on it. We, let's, let's stop trying to do stuff and figure stuff out on our own. And just learn to depend on Him. He knows what He's doing. He doesn't need our help. We just need to put our faith and trust in Him. Amen. Worship as we sing this song. I've had many tears and sorrows I've had questions for tomorrow There's been times I didn't know right from wrong Anybody been there? But in every situation God gave blessed consolation that my trials come only to make me strong. And you know what, church? Trust in God through it all, through it all. I've learned to depend upon His word. Oh, yes. I've been to lots of places. I've seen There's been times I felt so all alone. But you know what? But in my lonely hours, yes, those precious lonely hours, Jesus let me know that I was His own. Cause through
I would know that God could solve them. I'd never know what faith in God oh, yes. could do. Oh, yes. So I'll see through it all. Yes, through, through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God through it all through it all I've learned to depend upon His Word sing that chorus again this morning yes God is faithful even when I got to go through some stuff. Amen. I may not enjoy the stuff that I got to go through, but while I go through it, God has been faithful. Amen. Can we give him a hand clap of praise and thanksgiving for being faithful. Amen. When nobody else will stand with you, God will stand with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. and thank him this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Church, he's getting us ready to get out of here. We got to go through stuff, but he's going to prepare us to be ready to meet him when he comes. Hallelujah. Can we sing it one more time this morning? Hallelujah. We ought to give him praise and glory for all that he's brought us through and all that he's going to bring us through. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I've been to lots of places yes, and I've seen a lot of faces there's been times I felt so all alone but in my lonely hours yes those precious lonely hours Jesus let we know that I was his own. And let's sing this third verse. And I thank God for the mountains. And I thank him for the valleys. And I thank him for the storm he's brought me through. Oh, yes. For if I'd never had a problem, I wouldn't know that he could solve them. I'd never know what faith in God could do. My, my, my. Oh, yes. Cause through it all, through it all, I've learned. Trust in G. 
Jesus, I've learned to trust in God. Trust in God through it all, through it all. I learned to depend upon His word. Yes, I learned to depend upon His word. take us around things but God said he'd be with us as we go through things amen Amen. praise God you may be seated this morning going to dismiss the kids back to kids church if you have your Bibles this morning like you turn to Matthew chapter 10 and we're going to read verse 30 at the end of service we're going to honor all of our men and our fathers Uh, the little things that I have are for men and fathers, so if maybe you haven't been blessed to be a father, I still would like to acknowledge all of our men today at the end of service. Matthew 10, verse 30, once you've found that, if you're able and like to, you could stand for the reading of the word. You might read it and think, how's this going to be a Father's Day sermon? (laughs) maybe it's pulling your hair out as a father I don't know (laughs) Matthew 10 verse 30 but the very hairs of your head are numbered are all numbered let us pray father I thank you Lord for this privilege and opportunity Lord to stand here again and God declare your word of truth God we pray this morning God God, that you would anoint me and use me. God, anoint every ear to hear and every heart to receive. And Father, as I speak your word this morning, I pray, God, for your words to come forth. God, help me to decrease, Lord, that you might increase. And Father, I pray every word that I speak this morning. God, let it be anointed and unctioned of the Holy Ghost. And Father, I pray all this this morning in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, you may be seated. The title of my message is simply Father's Day. Now I'm going to try to get this for fathers and for everybody, so bear with me today. But today is is Father's Day, and I just want to take a look at some of God's, our Heavenly Father's attributes and how He has been a father to us. I'm not saying as fathers we can be like, or we can be gods because we will not be a god, but we can strive to be like God, right? Some of the things that He does as a father that we can strive for, maybe there are things that we might talk about this morning that you're not doing like you should be, or maybe you've never even tried to do today. But today I just want to share what the Lord laid on my heart, starting there in Matthew 10, verse 30. It says, but the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So guys, fathers, be careful. Um, don't get nervous. And don't panic. I'm not going to ask you to go home and count your kids' hairs, all right? But I just want to look at this scripture for a minute and think about God wanted us to know as our Heavenly Father how important and how loved that we were as His children as individuals that he would one by one know the very hairs that each and every one of us have here on our heads this morning. Amen. Every one of you here today is important to your heavenly Father. God loves you so much, amen, that he would take the time, amen, to number the hairs that you have on your head, and he knows us personally that that much personally that he would know how many hairs we have personally upon our heads. 
Amen. And I believe this morning as Christians and as Christian fathers, amen, it's important for us to know God. God wanted you to know how much he knew us by letting us know, by saying, hey, I numbered the hairs that you have on your head. But how well do you know God this morning? Amen. As if we're going to be good godly fathers or good Christians today, we got to know God better than anybody else. Better than our spouse, better than our children, better than anyone else on this planet. We need to know God. And I believe as fathers and as parents that we need to know our children. We need to know our kids. God, our Father, wanted us to know as His kids that He knew us very well. Well enough that He would number the hairs that we have on our head. Amen. He wanted you to know today that you are important to Him. You are valuable to God. Amen. God took time to number the hairs that you have on your head. And fathers, I believe today it's important for us to know our kids. And maybe I ask you the question, how well do you know your kids? I can truly say I could have done a better job. I thought I knew my kids, but they proved me wrong a time or two. But I probably could have spent a little bit more time getting to know them. And I believe it's important for us as parents, as, as, as fathers, to know our kids. Amen? I know we're not supposed to be their friends, but we should get to know them. Amen? I thought it was cool just because I remember their birthdays. I mean, we need to get them to know them a little better than just when their birthdays are. I could probably say today that I failed at that. We all live busy lives, and sometimes I think I was too busy. And life has just passed by. Now they're moved. Most of them are moved out. Got one still stuck at home. <laughs> he's not stuck. He just sleeps there. <laughs> but he's a pretty good tenant. He does his dishes and fixes his food and buys his own groceries. So he does a pretty good job. <laughs> But I believe as fathers, as Christians, as mothers, as brothers and sisters in the Lord, we ought to get to know one another. Amen. The senior adults are going to be meeting. This is not a plug for their, for their meeting, but we all have, we have events in the church for our youth, our senior adults, our middle age group, our marriage groups, and we have different events where we can just sit down and, hey, get to know one another. They're going to go to Denny's and eat just to get to know one another. You might find out something about somebody maybe you really didn't want to know, but you might find out something (laughs) that you thought, man, I never knew they did that. I never knew they liked to do that. And maybe that's what we... Anyway, let's... I'm out in left field now. We done run a rabbit and it's coming around. Here it goes. But we should take the time. We live busy. I know we're all busy. But take some time. It's an hour. You guys spend an hour maybe? Hour, hour and a half? Take some time. If you're able to get off work, if you're retired, that's what the senior adults, most of them are retired. You got time to go spend an hour eating lunch, talking to some other Christians. Amen. How many knows it could be beneficial? All right, let's go on. I beat that up enough and let's go the other way. But we need to be careful that we don't waver in our faith. We need to be strong in our faith. Malachi 3 and 6 says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Amen. Using God as our example this morning, because you don't want to use me as your example, because I haven't been the best father. But we look to our Heavenly Father this morning, our perfect example. Amen. He is the Lord God and He changes not. He's always the same. He don't weaken with time. Amen. He never changes. And I'm not saying, fathers, as Christians, that we're going to be little gods. Because we will not be. But we should be striving to be like God. God never changes. And as fathers and as Christians, amen, we need to be the same here at church as we are at home. Amen. 
Our kids soon see a father on Sunday and a different father on Monday. Or our neighbors shouldn't see a Christian on Sunday and not a Christian on Monday. Our co-workers shouldn't see us, amen, going to church and then coming to work and cussing like everybody else. But we need to be firm and strong in our faith in the Lord. And we can't be wavering with every wind of doctrine that comes our way. We need to know what we believe. And we need to be firm in our belief. Amen? You want to want, will you wonder what we believe as Christians or as the Lafayette Pentecostal Church of God? We got a class my wife teaches on this we believe. And if you've forgotten what you believe, you can come here at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning and she'll help you remember. Or maybe you don't know what to believe. This will help. And we got Sunday school class for our kids. We got adult Sunday school. We got Wednesday night Bible study. Amen. Times that we can come, amen, and get stronger in our faith in God. Because we're living in a day and hour where everybody's wanting us to change when they should be wanting to change to be like us. Amen? God doesn't change. God's always the same. And guess what? His book that he wrote many years ago, amen, the inspired word of God is still relevant for us in 2024. And if God said it was sin, it's still sin today. Amen? But as fathers, as Christians, we need to be strong in who we are. Don't tell your kids to get up and go to church when you stay home yourself. Be an example. Don't tell them they need to pray and you don't pray. Be firm in what you say. And don't waver in the things that you say. Amen? If you tell your kids they're going to get it because they don't clean your room, how many knows they need to get it? However, your get it is. My mom's get it was a switch. My dad's get it was his hand or a belt. <laughs> but we need to be firm and strong. Hey man, if we tell our kids we're going to do something, we need to go through with what we said. Hey Amen. We need to live out our faith in front of them. And we also must be stern in our punishment and our rules. We need to have rules. Now, most of y'all and your kids are grown, but if you've got kids that are home, we need rules and boundaries. Anyway, I don't know where I'm going. I'm all over today. Be strong in the Lord. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 18, it says, And will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Ephesians 6, verse 10, Finally, my brethren... Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. See, that's how we become strong in the Lord, is by the power of His his might. We know the Bible says that He is the Lord Almighty. There's not any other God stronger, more powerful than our Heavenly Father. Amen. How many remember when you were little, if you knew your dad, if you had a close relationship with your dad, you thought he was the strongest guy on the planet, right? My dad's stronger than your dad. My dad can do better than your dad. Have you ever heard those stories before? Or maybe you didn't have a relationship with your dad. You have a heavenly father that loves you, and he's strong today. Now, I'm not saying, guys, we've got to go hit the gym so we can be strong for our families, because don't worry, I'm not hitting no gym. The only gym I might hit is if I pick up Jordan as he goes to the gym. <laughs> Man, I'm way out there today. But I believe as fathers and as Christians, we need to be strong in the Lord. Amen? We need to know who our Heavenly Father is, and we need to know what He's all about. Amen? We can't just be on church on Sunday, and then the next two Sundays we're on the lake. We need to be strong in our faith and our walk and our relationship with God. And you're not going to become strong in the Lord on the lake. You know? <laughs> or maybe it's the golf course. Or maybe it's the whatever. We need to remember to put God first above everything else. If we want a strong relationship with God, He's got to be number one. Amen? 
We can't pray for our kids on Sunday night as they go to bed and then forget the rest of the week. We can't sit down at the table and pray over our food on Sunday afternoon, but the rest of the week we fail to acknowledge God that He blessed us with the food that we're about to eat. Amen? Our children, our kids, needs to see some strong examples of godly Christians. Not just fathers, but mothers. Amen as well. Amen. It's important for us to be strong in the Lord. Amen. There's too many phonies out there. We've got too many fakey, dakey, flaky Christians today. We need some people that not just speak it, but live it. Not just wear the t-shirt, but wear what's underneath it. Amen. It's easy to put on a hat and says Jesus loves you. Amen. And you live like the devil. But we need to put the hat on and let people know Jesus loves them. And we need to be strong in our faith. Amen. Now I've told you my story about my dad and my house, but. My dad was strong in his belief that me and my house were going to be in church every time the doors were open. Kids, you think it's bad your mom and dad make you go to church Sunday morning. My mom and dad made me come to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, revival. Every time the doors were open. You had to be dead not to be in church. So I tried the sick thing, that didn't work. And I tried the hangover thing, and that didn't work either. As long as you lived in my dad's house when it was church time, we were in church. They shouldn't be telling you whether they're going or not going. Anyway. We need to be strong in the Lord. Amen? I may not have listened, and I may not, uh, uh, well, I did listen, but I may not have act like I was listening, but every time I was come to church, the Spirit of God would tug at my heart. I may have said the farthest I could sit from the preacher and from everything that was going on up here, but can I tell you, the Spirit of God came to that back chair back in the back, underneath the steps of the old church, and God touched my heart every time I was in the house of God. Amen. So be strong. They may fight you. Can I tell you, when mom and dad said, let's go to church, I didn't say, oh, it's church time. (laughs) I probably made them late several times. I was fighting to go to church. Anyway, that's a whole other one. And we can't be liars. Oh, this is weird. Numbers 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. He ha- he has said, and he shall, and he shall he not do it. I can't speak King James today. Or hath he spoken, and how she and ha- and he shall not make it good. Somebody needs to interpret that. <laughs> I just bogged it all up. Oh Lord. But we can't lie. We've got to be the, speak the truth today. We know God is not a liar. When God said something, we can count on it, right? If God said this is going to happen, how many knows it's going to happen? It may not happen in your time frame, but it will happen. When we speak something and we make promises to our kids or to our families or to anybody, we need to do what we say we're going to do. We've got too many lying Christians today. I'll pray for you, brother. As soon as they walk out the door, they forget they even said it. Don't act like you ain't never done it. Or they say, I love you, brother. And then when you're struggling, there's nobody around. Or I'll be there to help. And guess what? Nobody shows up. We need to be who we say we are. If we say we're going to do it, we need to do it. Amen. Fathers, if you tell your kids, I'm going to be at your game tonight, we need to show up at that game. Fathers, if you tell your kids, I'm going to be at your program at school, we need to show up and be there. I know there's times where we can't be there if something happens, but if you're just sitting at home watching TV instead of going to that choir concert, shame on you. Shame on me. I didn't do that. 
But if I did, shame on me. Anyway, this is way out there. But too many people today make promises and they make themselves liars because they don't fulfill their promise. We're using God as our example today. Our Heavenly Father, He never lies. And when He speaks something, amen, He speaks it and He fulfills what He speaks. And we should be the same way as Christians and fathers today. If we speak something, people should know when they spoke it, it's truth. I told you this story, but when I worked at Rostone many years ago, amen, we were standing in line getting ready to clock out. And all the guys, they, they were cussing and going on, saying all this stuff. And then the boss, our boss walks up, and one of the guys said, Hey, tell the boss what Chris said. He was cussing behind your back. And the boss calls me in his office. I thought I'm in trouble. I was like, I didn't say nothing. He said, I know. I know who you are, and I know you wouldn't say that. But I just wanted to do it just to show them. But anyway, he knew who I was. Amen? Because I stood for something. We need to stand for something today and be who we say we are. Amen? All right, let's go on. Now, you might jump and shout at this one. We need to take time to rest. Yeah, praise God. Genesis chapter 2, verse 2. And on the seventh day, God ended His work which He had made, and He rested on the seventh day from all His work which He had made. How many knows God, the Creator of everything, needed rest? As fathers, as Christians, there are times that we need to rest. Amen? I, I thought everybody would be shouting on that one. I don't know how many punishments I gave out when I was tired and angry and crouchy. Nobody else ever done that? When your kids got on your last nerve just like that because you were so worn out for working? Amen? I believe it's important for us as fathers, as parents... Amen, to be laborers, amen, and work and provide for our children and for our families. But I believe we need to take time that we rest. That's not sleeping in on Sunday morning. Huh? That's the only day I get off, I understand. But guess what? Church don't start till 10 o'clock. That's if you make it to Sunday school. I don't, how many people in here go to work at 10 o'clock? Anybody? We all have to be at work before 10 o'clock, most of us. Adults, you kids, younger ones, they probably go to work later hours. But most of us have to be at work at 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 6 o'clock. I went in at 4.30 a lot. So coming to church at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, that's sleeping in. Exodus 20, verse 8, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. We consider Sunday as our Sabbath. Amen, and I believe it's important for us as, as fathers, as Christians, as examples, amen, that we need to take time to rest, but don't rest and sleep through church. Amen. It's important for us to rest, but I believe also it's important for us to bring our kids and our family to church. I got to the point where I knew not to even ask them if I could stay home for church, because I knew I wasn't dead. Because whatever excuse I had, it wasn't going to be good enough. We think, <laughs> Lord, help me. But I believe it's important for us to take time to rest, but also don't neglect the house of God, is what I'm trying to say. Amen? All right, let's go on. Be a refuge. For your kids or for somebody else. If you don't have kids, be a refuge for somebody else. Psalms 46 verse 1, we're using God as our example. God said He is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. God, our Heavenly Father, is a refuge for us to run to when trouble comes. Amen. As fathers, as Christian brothers and sisters... Maybe you're here today and you're not a father, but you're a Christian brother or sister to somebody else. We need to be a refuge that people can go to and not be afraid that we're going to judge them or condemn them. Amen? We need to be a safe place where people can go to 
Amen. And share their heart if they want to pour their heart out. Not worried about me going telling everybody else. Or our kids ought to be able to come to us and not be afraid to come of us because of the bad decision that they've made. Or they tried something they shouldn't have tried. Or they did something they shouldn't have did. Now I'm not saying be a doormat, let them just do whatever they want. I believe we ought to be stern and firm. But they ought to be able to come to us when we have a problem. Amen. And come and be able to share their heart with us. And know that we'll pray for them and we'll love them. But we won't condone their sin. Amen. I'm not telling you to condone sin today. But I believe we ought to still love them. Amen. We can't write them off. Amen. Thank God they didn't write me off. Because I should have been written off. Bible says God is our refuge, a place that we can go to. Amen. As Christians, as brothers and sisters, as fathers, we need to be a refuge for others. If somebody needs somebody to cry their cry on a shoulder to cry on, we need to be that shoulder. Bible says that God is our strength, a refuge and a strength. And fathers, we need to be strength for our kids. Amen. We need to pray for our kids. I don't know how our kids today, they're tempted with so many things more than what we were. If, if you saw what your kids saw today, you'd probably be blown away. They see stuff we never would have thought we'd see at school. They deal with things, hear things. We need to pray for our kids that God will give them strength today to resist the temptations of this world. Amen. Fathers, I ask you today, how often do you pray for your kids? Hopefully Daily. Mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters in Christ, you may not have children in your home, but if you've got children in the church that you know are struggling, pray for them. Pray for the kids of the church. Pray for your family. That God will give them strength to resist the temptations of this world. It's so easy for them to get sucked right in. Amen? All right, let's go on. Be, pre- be present in your kid's life. Our Heavenly Father, God said, I'm very present in your times of trouble. We shouldn't just be present to punish them when they're in trouble, but we should be there to teach them or help them learn from their trouble. Amen? I'm not saying enable your kids. I don't believe we should enable them to continue to sin and do the things that they know are wrong, but we should be there to help guide them out of their trouble. Amen? Not by enabling them. Amen? But be there to be strong for them. Amen? And be present to know that I'm supporting you and I'm praying for you, but I will not condone the thing that you're doing. Amen? Sometimes we got to draw the line in the sand and say, you cross this line, you're on your own, but I still love you. It's hard to do. I've had to do it. How many knows they know where we stand? Thank God that God never kicks us to the curb. I'm not saying kick them to the curb and never love them again. But amen, if you've got to make a choice and decision to stand, amen, you've got to stand for that decision, but you can still love them. Let's go on. We need to love like God loved us. John 3, verse 17, For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through Him might be saved. God, our Heavenly Father, loved us so much that He sent Jesus to die in our place so that we could make heaven our home. He didn't send Jesus to the world to condemn the world, but to help them out of their sins. We as fathers, as Christians, we need to love as God loved us, that while we were yet sinners, He died for us. Amen? As again, I'm not saying condone their sin, but we need to still love them while they're in their sin. Amen? Jesus came not to condemn. Amen? Us showing up saying, I taught you better than that. It's not always the right answer. 
or the right attitude. I'm not here telling you I'm the perfect father. Follow me as the example because I've done that before. I taught you better than that. But guess what? It didn't get me anywhere. They already know they messed up. They already know they're probably done wrong. But we're there to show them love. Amen. As God loved us. Thank God He don't hold our mistakes over our head. Because I'd have a whole bunch of stuff holding over my head today. Jesus came not into this world to condemn the world, but to, through Him we might be saved. Amen? Our ultimate goal is for them to get to heaven, right? To show them a better life. To show them a better way. To be an example. Why would anybody want to follow a God that was always in con- condemnation, bringing condemnation? God will judge us and God is stern and God will not slacken His promises. If God says it's sin, it's sin. That's not what I'm trying to say. But God still loves the sinner. Jesus died for the sinner. Amen? But He didn't die to rub their face in it. I know this ain't a shout and holler and message. I'm just telling you what the Lord laid on my heart. And my last scripture today, we must be willing to forgive. Ephesians 4, 32, be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. As they return to the music this morning, I didn't come today to pretend to be the perfect father and say, hey, look at me, I'm your example, because that's not why I'm here. But I stand before you today as a father who's messed up many times. I've failed. But today I stand before you. I present to you a perfect father, a heavenly father that has never failed. Strive to be like him. Strive as Christians to be like your heavenly father. Don't strive to be like me or your earthly father because we all make mistakes. How many guys, fathers in here, raise your hand and say, hey man, we messed up. Come on, be real. How many's messed up being a father? Huh? But guess what? We got a heavenly father that we can look to that never could raise his hand and say, hey, I messed up. We have a heavenly father that is a perfect, good father, as we sang earlier. He's a good, good father. Let's stand this morning. If we're going to be good fathers, good Christians, good examples for the world that we live in, we must pattern ourselves after our Heavenly Father. The word Christian means to be Christ-like. We should be striving to be like Christ. Amen? Not as a man or an individual, but to Jesus, our perfect example. Kids will break your heart. They'll rip your heart right out of your chest. Amen? How many times has God's heart been ripped? How many times God's heart probably ripped every minute, every, every second his heart may feel like it's being ripped out of his chest because somebody denies him or somebody refuses his gift of salvation. But yet he still continues to love. Oh, what a love. As we bow our heads and close our eyes before we move into the next part of the service. Maybe you're here this morning as we bow our heads today. Maybe you're here where you know you're not where you need to be with God. Maybe you've walked away from God. Maybe you've broke God's heart. God's here today and He wants you to know He loves you. He wants to forgive you, but you must first confess your sin to Him. The Bible says that if we'll confess our sin to Him, He's faithful and just to forgive us. Maybe you're here and you failed God over and over and over again. Guess what? God still loves you and He wants to give you another chance. you got to make a step of faith and get out of your seat and say, God, I need your help. Because we're not meant to live this Christian life all by ourselves. We have a Heavenly Father that said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, but I'll be with you to the very end. Even when we mess up, God's there to pick us up. If you're here today and you've messed up and walked away from God, find your way back home today. 
Your Heavenly Father is here with His arms outstretched, wanting you to know that He loves you with that everlasting love. Or maybe you're here this morning. Maybe you're a father. Maybe you're a Christian and you failed of being the best that you know you should be. Maybe you haven't stood for what's right when you had the opportunity to stand for what's right. Maybe you caved in under the pressure today. If you'd like to come and say, Lord, give me the strength to be a stronger father or a better example to my co-workers or the world that I live in, this altar's open for you. Maybe you're here this morning and you say, I want to be a better father, better Christian. Come to this altar and say, Lord, give me the strength. Help me to live my life. The altars are open. If you don't want to come, amen, right where you're at, pray and say, God, give me the strength to be more like you. Help me, Lord, to be an example to everybody I come in contact with. Amen. And right where you're at, let's pray and sing. Hallelujah. Jesus,
Amen. Let's just pray, God, we give them the strength to stand and to be that example in this 24, 2024 day that we live in where it's hard and hectic. But God, we give them the strength to stand firm this morning. Father, I thank you, Lord, for these godly men, these examples, God, that we can look to. Father, help them, Lord, to continue to be rooted and grounded in your word and in their prayer lives and in their church attendance. Lord, let them stand firm upon your word, even when they work in a world that's sinful. God, when they go around sinners, God, let them shine their lights. Lord, that they can be an example of your love. Help them not to waver in their faith, but God, let them stand firm, God, upon what they stand for. And Father, I thank you today for each of these men. And God, we give you honor and give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you, fathers. If you haven't got your picture taken, if you'd like to get it after service, you feel free. Let's give them all a hand today, amen. Hallelujah.